Right, baby. It's, uh, it's America. I don't know what else to say about it. XQC would have given the money. <laughs> okay, well, ask XQC then. Um, anyway, today's the 14th anniversary of the NIU shooting and the 5th anniversary of Parkland yesterday. Like I said, um, you know, the likelihood that a shooting is going to happen in America or a shooting has happened in America on any particular day is, of course, I mean, there are... I don't think there are any days in America where shootings don't happen, like mass shootings. I mean, 600? Come on, you know? It's going to happen. It's like twice a day. What do you mean at this point? It's like, it's one of those weird things where, you know how we talk about like, oh man, you know, this is a disaster, like, hard it's uh, why are you talking about it like this you know why uh, you know don't make jokes in a situation like this it's like or maybe it's too soon to talk about this it's like well there's never a day where you can't talk about it because there's always another fucking mass shooting it's the united states of america baby there's literally another mass shooting every there's two there's two a day so It's like, by the time I'm done covering this, another mass shooting is going to happen. Oh, I'm not even right. It's 69 so far. I thought it was 67. What happened? Did another mass shooting occur while I was talking? I got the number wrong. I was off by two. Guys. Sorry. How come you only talk about it when it's in wealthy colleges and not all the ones in poor black neighborhoods? Most are gang on gang shootouts. Hell yeah, gamer girl, one, two, three. Definitely a real girl. Yeah. Yo, this man, this person said. Possible I had it nice as a block term on Automod? What the fuck? Maybe let's not do that. This person said. <laughs> Mass shootings. What about fucking black on black violence? What? We're not even. Is your brain broken, dude? You you you're normally as an NPC. You're normally supposed to supposed to blurt that line out when we're talking about Black Lives Matter. You know what I mean? Normally, okay. Racist people love using that when when uh, people are talking about like police brutality. Well, they'd be like, "What about black on black violence?" What about gang shootings that are happening in the hood? You know, it kind of doesn't work in this situation. Like, what are you trying to deflect away from? I mean, it doesn't work in that situation either because nobody fucking says, what about white on white violence, right? Literally the same, almost exactly the same uh, rate. Turns out America is very segregated and people just usually kill people that are in their immediate vicinity. Brother, I'm gamer girl, one, two, four. Okay. As a black woman, I think, what about black on black violence? How about you don't, why don't you talk about that? Yes. I love Candace Owens. She's one of the good ones. I mean, uh, she's just like me, a black woman. I'm one of the good ones. <laughs> I'm very articulate as a black woman, as you can see. Do not test me. I'm gamer girl one two four. You trigger the wrong cutscene with them, yeah. Just fucking brain broke, really. It just started blurting out lines. Huh. 
Anyway. From MSU, I got a notification that my test was graded at 10.30 p.m. while the shooter was still active. I mean, listen. It's going to happen, right? It's going to happen so frequently that at this point, it's like, you might, your teachers might as well, your teachers and your TAs might as well keep grading papers through a fucking mass shooting. You know what I mean? At a certain point, you're just like, all right. He subliminally understood slash thinks mass shootings are white culture, so we had to do a racial whataboutism. Except, like, I think the shooter in this case is black. So, like, that's the funnier part about this is that, like, gamer girl who wanted to come in here and do the classic, like, what about black people doing violent things? Didn't even know the details of the shooting. Because if you were, like, at least better at your racism, you could have been like, uh -huh, look at this. A black guy did a mass shooting. Bitch, you want to hide the truth about that, huh? Like, something like that. That's what a... That's what... Dude, white people fell off. I'm going to say it again, okay? They used to have better... They used to have better takedowns. They used to have a better... Like, they would, they would run. Uh, uh, to, to do better racism and your racism has fallen off. You're failing the vibe checks. You're getting lazy, dude. Nobody wants to work anymore. White people don't even work hard to be racist anymore. They're on autopilot. It's fucked up. Anyway. Begin with the breaking news overnight. The kind we always hate to bring you. You know how this is going. There's been another mass shooting in America. Now, this time it happened on the campus of Michigan State University. At least three people were killed and five more were wounded. Police say the suspect seen here during the attack is dead. And they have not released his identity. And there's no motive that we know of so far. Roxana Sibiri is in East Lansing, Michigan, where the campus is located. Roxana, good morning. A lot of us woke up to this news this morning. Good morning, Gail. It is another tragic story. The suspect has been identified only as a 43-year-old man. Around 50,000 students are enrolled here. And last night, many fled or boarded themselves up in their dorms as law enforcement tried, tried to track down the shooter. This truly has been a nightmare that we are living tonight. Police say the nightmare began just after 8.15 p.m. Monday. We have multiple victims at this time. Dispatch audio reveals the violent scene as the gunman appeared to move from room to room in a building on MSU's campus. All I have so far is that there's a shooter in the hallway, 135, who are jumping out of a window currently. Oh, my God. Terrified students appeared to run for their lives. Chaos and... Con yeah, dude's dead, right? Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know who the identity is. I mean, this is old. Confusion spread across the campus as local, state, and federal law enforcement swarm the massive university. Everyone's freaked out. Everyone's terrified. I see these people running in my direction, and I sprint. I'm jumping down flights of stairs. Around an hour after the shooting was first reported, police said the suspect was believed to be on foot. At 9.26 p.m., they reported a second shooting location, later confirming the incidents occurred at Berkey Hall, a social sciences building, and then at the nearby student union. Roughly three hours after the first shots were reported. Isn't it weird that this happens right after Ohio and suddenly all the media is covering MSU or just another Tuesday? Okay, guys, I need to tell you guys something, and I, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. I've been covering the Ohio thing pretty much since the start. I was like three days late to the story which is not usually something I, I do. Like, the media just doesn't care. Like, they will never cover Ohio and shit like that unless it, uh, unless it becomes like a big stink. You know, Lizzo tweeting about it and shit is probably uh, going to cause the media to, like, maybe cover it a little bit. But, like, there doesn't need to be a conspiracy. Well, there is a conspiracy, and I don't mean, like, a conspiracy theory. I mean a conspiracy in the sense that, like, the media is conspiring all the time to defend capital interests, but that conspiracy is capitalism. Like, things like train derailments happen all the fucking time. Chemicals are being dumped into your natural water supply all the fucking time. Wells are being poisoned all the fucking time due to poultry factories, okay? And the runoff due to uh, DuPont chemicals, uh, due to all matter of, of like, uh, you know, all matter of manufacturing... 
that they basically do this regularly. You're being poisoned regularly, non-fucking stop. The reason why you don't hear about it, or like, for example, child slavery, child labor that's happening in Alabama Hyundai facilities. Why don't you hear about it all that much? Because this would, you know, make the companies look bad. And the media is also, you know, run by these companies. They get money from these ma major corporations. So they rarely ever talk about it. So they don't need a fucking reason to be like, ooh, they're trying to distract us. No, you're just waking up to the reality for the first time ever. When you see what the fuck happened in Ohio, you go, what the fuck is going on? As normal. As normal, it happens regularly. Just like the weather balloons that are uh, being popped by the DOD right now. There's unidentified objects that the military shoots down all the fucking time. Most of them are like weather balloons and shit, if they even care about it. It's not that surprising. They, even, they usually don't even shoot it down. They just let it go. You know? University police released... That's a lie? You think that's a lie? You think the military doesn't... If you think the military... If you... They do not you routinely shoot down objects over the country? No, they don't shoot objects down over the... First of all, yes, they do. They did it in Hawaii. You just didn't hear about it. If there was a fucking list of... Uh, if there was a list of, like, uh, you know, the military regularly shooting shit down... Um, you would, you would be able, I would be able to show you exactly how many times they've done it, but no, one of the ones that I can immediately think of is like literally the same exact shit that happened in Hawaii. It just didn't get a lot of news coverage. So you didn't hear about it. So it wasn't in the fucking forefront of your mind. So you have no idea. They don't usually disclose it. They don't usually talk about it that much because people just start panicking. Hassam knows more than the Pentagon now? That's not what I said. What? What are you talking about? Hawaii? Pearl Harbor? No, man. An unidentified object was shot over Hawaii like a year ago or two years ago. Like, uh, it was like a, it was another weather balloon type thing. It was another. <clears throat> it's just, it's all, it's all, uh, uh, all the subject matter that we cover now, or even if I fucking Google it now, not true. It is 100% true. Oh my God. It's so fucking annoying. Baited. Oh, you did. You got me. No, this is, this is a new one. This is not what I'm talking about. This is a new one. Oh, no, this is not a new one. This is last year. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. This is the one I was talking about. Never mind. This is the one I was talking about. There's another, there's another one that happened in Hawaii as well. That's why I thought you were sending me. I didn't realize it was straight up around the same time that happened. Yeah, F-22 scrambled to investigate a mysterious high-altitude balloon off the coast of Hawaii. The, inter they, the intercept of a suspicious balloon near Kauai's North Shore is peculiar for a number of reasons. No, they did shoot it down, I'm pretty sure. The UFO stories all over corporate media are being pushed heavily by the U.S. military and spy agencies looking back at history. This looks like a psyop to hide... New experiment. Yeah, if it was a PSYOP, this would be the most likely reason for it to be a PSYOP, to hide new military technology and shit like that. Okay? Pentagon has confirmed that the first missile fired at the UFO above Lake Huron missed. That's 400000 The $400,000 Sidewinder landed harmlessly in the lake, said General Mark Milley. Nice. So it's not to like distract away from the fucking train derailment or stories like that because the media wasn't going to cover the train derailment story anyway. They don't need to cover fucking UFOs to, to misdirect you. 
You fools are misdirected every day. It's literally part of the reason for why I exist is so that you stay on point and you regularly look at issues that matter. I would not exist as a media entity if the media was always covering shit that was important, okay? That's it. So, conspiracy theories think normal news stories are distractions. Motherfucker is called time marching on. Yeah, literally. Like, literally just current events. Thing that happened yesterday, thing that happened today. Oh, I'm so mad. It's like, yeah, dude, I know. Anyway, we'll get to the... We'll get to the, the uh, other stuff in a second. But, like... I think now they'll cover it a little bit more. They'll cover their co they'll cover the Ohio stuff more, but I promise you it, they just don't ever cover shit. Okay? They don't cover shit like Ohio, just like they're not going to cover the derailment that happened in Houston, just like they're not going to cover the hundreds of other derailments that have happened. Uh just like they rarely ever cover, you know, runoff from factories destroying water wells in other fucking post-industrial middle America that happens regularly. Do you get it? These things happen all the time. It's completely unacceptable. It's probably happening to you. Here, another great example, okay? You want to know something that's ongoing in my fucking backyard? Something that's ongoing in my fucking backyard, okay? Okay is that Los Angeles as a city has a lot of fracking wells, okay? Has a lot of operations. And a lot of these, a lot of these like oil refine or oil refinery fracking operations happen literally inside of city limits where people live, okay? And most people don't realize that. Most people are unaware of it. It's in low-income neighborhoods, okay? California has a lot of oil. And it happens in low-income neighborhoods. There have been studies conducted on this that show that this kind of uh, oil fracking and, and just like, uh, you know, uh, this kind of, I, I guess, like oil wells existing in these neighborhoods could have unforeseen negative consequences on uh, negative consequences on the children that grow up in those vicinities. So black and brown kids living in low-income neighborhoods have a higher likelihood of developing childhood asthma. It could be from the, the oil operations. It could be from the gas stoves they potentially have. But this is a very real thing. Yeah, developing cancer, developing childhood asthma. That's like just a, a regular thing that happens in Los Angeles and in low-income neighborhoods in California that we just don't even think about. You know what I mean? And that's a real thing that's happening all the time. It's just like, you're not going to see the media nonstop fucking talk about this shit. Huh. They won't. They won't even tell you that the top of the hour ad break is coming in 20 minutes late. And then, boom, all of a sudden, the top of the hour ad break is here, and you're like, what the fuck? I didn't realize. Why is it here 20 minutes late? Well, maybe because I forgot to run it. Okay, I'm not on my fucking A game right now. But if you no longer want to see those three-minute ads at the top of the fucking hour or the middle of the hour ad break, which is one minute long, but that's a secret one, all you need to do is subscribe, which you could do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Okay, here's the three minute ad break now. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. All right, let's get back to the MSU thing. These photos of the alleged gunman, described as a short statured black male wearing a jean jacket, red shoes, and a baseball cap. He was a manly. About an hour later, police say the gunman shot and killed himself at an off campus location. Clear mail not moving. Uh, GSW that. You wait here. 
After police determined there was no longer a threat to the campus, MSU's interim president offered an emotional message to the community. We will take two days where we will move to emergency operation to give ourselves time to think and to grieve and to be together. And this Spartan community, this family, will come back. Classes here are canceled for the next two days. We spoke to students last night who said even though police say the gunman is dead, they were still too afraid to sleep in their dorms. Some checked into a local hotel and others went home to their parents. Nate. Roxana, thank you. And welcome back, everybody. We are learning more about last night's shootings on MSU's campus that left three students dead. Five others are critically wounded, and we have learned who's behind the attacks. Fox 2's Jessica Dupnack, live in East Lansing. Just Apparently, this is uh, there's new developments on this. Classes are canceled for the week now, not just for two days. For the record, for those of you, there's new information on this. You're just doing a great job. I know it's been a really long night, long morning for you, um, but we appreciate you being there so much and bringing such important information. Yeah, and really this is a, a testament, uh, not to, to the media, but really to the law enforcement and the medical professionals that have been literally up all night trying to sort through this mess. I want to get to some breaking information that I was just able to confirm uh, regarding the shooter, who his name is Anthony McRae, and I'll now refer to him as the shooter for the duration of the report, a 43-year-old from Lansing. We're learning a little more about his past. I'm just getting some information from uh, the Michigan Department of Corrections right now uh, about his prior offenses. I guess he has uh, four counts uh, between 2006, 2008 of driving on a suspended license. Uh, again, a more serious charge in 2019 here in June of 2019 in Lansing. Uh, I guess he was found by police uh, heading to his store. He had a weapon on him. He was stopped by police. That weapon uh, was not registered and he did not have a concealed pistols license to be traveling with that weapon. He did end up pleading guilty uh, to that felony charge and served probation time uh, for that. Uh, that just gives a little indication that obviously uh, this shooter has a past with weapons. Now, as far as motive, we have really no indication at this point what his motive, why he chose Michigan State University on February 13th to carry out this attack. It's something in details that uh, both Michigan State uh, Police and the the FBI are keeping very close to the vest. But a little recap of what we've been talking about all morning. We are standing here in front of Berkey Hall. That was the initial scene here on campus. Uh, that shooter moved a couple uh, doors down to the union to carry out the rest of the attack. Uh, now we got an indication from Michigan State Police what it looked like on the ground when that call went out uh, shortly after 8 o'clock. Let's take a listen to the deputy chief of Michigan State uh, University Police. There was a absolutely overwhelming police. Yeah, he was on the radar of law enforcement, dude. What do you what do you expect? <laughs> Bro, their radar is <laughs> he's always on the radar. <laughs> Every guy is on the radar. It's so odd because we have like we have laws supposedly around this shit, whether it be of some semblance of red flag laws, whether it be some kind of like uh, you know, uh, uh, it's supposed to be illegal if you are, are, you know, a domestic abuser, for example, uh, to, to own a gun, but it just never works. It just, you know, police response to that initial call. We had officers in that building within minutes and in that building. Wait, never mind. Michigan does not require background checks for long guns, have a red flag law, disarm domestic abusers, restrict assault weapons, limit magazine capacity, or regulate open carry. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Yep. You know it's crazy, too, because, like, when it comes to violating the Fourth Amendment, the Supreme Court is like, oh, fuck yeah, please let me violate. Please, please. You know, bring any kind of, when it comes down to like protecting abortion, um, protecting like straight up regular uh, medical procedures that you may want to get 
as a whole as adult the supreme court will never defend you but god damn it dude if the state legislatures if let's say in the perfect world state legislatures are like all blue okay across the board both the house both the house and the fucking senate inside of the states are are let's say deep blue and they decide to do what republicans do all the fucking time and like genuinely push for this kind of thing you bet your fucking ass that would be elevated to the supreme court so goddamn fast in violation of the in violation of the uh you know the second amendment and it'd be struck down so quickly dude holy fuck don't even think about it you know what i mean don't even imagine Yeah, you can't do that. No shot. Nice, dude. Okay, I'm going to delete the Erdogan leak from the title because people are being annoying. It's not like a... Okay, I'm just going to take that off the title so people stop uh, asking me about it. Okay. Cover that later when I get to it. It's not even a leak. It's not even a leak. It's just... It came out that he like openly off verdi off off zamanında birkaç sene önce 2019 senesinde galiba off vermiş developerlara Kahramanmaraş'taki ve her yerdeki developerlara ve ondan sonra da AK Parti'de AKP hep şey e, bu e, malzeme kaçıran şerefsiz orospu çocuğu olan e, e, müteahhitlere şey yapmışlar e, af vermişler izin vermişler çalmalarına basically. It's just old audio of known corruption, exactly. Oldu mu? Anladınız mı? Countered several students who were injured. We can confirm that two of the deceased were in Berkey Hall. We now know the eight victims, all students here at Michigan State University. There was more than one person based on what we heard from people around the campus. Yeah, there was a lot of misinformation, I guess. People are very brain broken about this. About half of adults say there would be fewer mass shootings if it was harder to, for people to obtain guns legally, while about as many either say this would make no difference or that there would be more mass shootings. 9% say there would be more mass shootings if there were less guns on the streets. 42% say that it wouldn't make a difference. That's like, that is just objectively untrue. So I don't know what to fucking say about it. Like, it's like asking Americans, like, do you think, ugh, fuck, I don't even know what else would be so obvious. Brother. You're, 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 this is like, this is not an opinion, okay? It is just an objective fact. It's like asking Americans, thank you, that's a, one chatter said it. It's like asking Americans, like, 42% of Americans don't think smoking causes cancer, like lung cancer, or increases the likelihood that you'll get lung cancer. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care that 42% of Americans think that. They're just wrong. They're objectively wrong. 42% of Americans don't think that smoking increases the likelihood that you could have lung cancer. And 9% of Americans actually think smoking is better for your lungs. Like, you, you just basically said that to me. At least 30% of Americans will always agree to the dumbest thing, okay? At least... You can get at least 30% of Americans to just, like, advocate for the silliest shit. Just objectively untrue shit.
custody. Three of them sadly found dead. The other five students were taken to Sparrow Hospital in nearby Lansing for where we are here on campus. They remain in critical condition as far as a prognosis for those students. Uh, we have not gotten that yet, but we are expected to learn the names of all of the victims involved as long as uh, family has been notified. Um, but just a, a very uh, calm, quiet scene here on campus. Uh, university will be closed or on modified operations for the next two days, then classes canceled until Monday. But sort of uh, rewinding back to last night, being here really throughout the night, just an amazing law enforcement response here. Hundreds of officers from uh, across the state ascended here in East Lansing. It was that response and really a testament to the students and the folks here in the East Lansing 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 area. It was a tip that led to the shooter uh, as police moved in on the shooter. Uh, he, of course, as we've been reported, shot himself and was found deceased. But again, we were just learning and we talked about uh, at the top there that this shooter does have a prior history driving on a suspended license, but also a more serious charge of a felony firearm charge. He was uh, caught with a weapon in 2019 in Lansing and was later charged and served probationary time. Uh, uh, but we will hopefully learn more about motive because I think that's really a big question aside from, of course, all of the thoughts and prayers for this community is is the question why. And we're left hanging with that as of this morning. Send it back to you guys. Hey, Jessica, a question for you. As we were listening to police scanner traffic last night and, and calls were coming in fast and furious of reports of gunfire, reports of somebody banging on a door. How do uh, how does law enforcement create a perimeter? Or how do they sweep all these buildings? We know there are hundreds of buildings on campus and some of these old buildings filled with all kinds of nooks and crannies. So what is the approach when it comes to searching for a gunman on the loose in such a vast area? Oh, yeah, Dina, you're familiar with campus. We're talking about 400 buildings here on campus alone, not to mention, obviously, this is a metropolitan area in East Lansing and Lansing. Uh, you know, the sad part about all of this is these officers are extremely well trained uh, in searching for shooters because it has become so common. Bro, they're so well trained in searching for shooters that they couldn't find him, apparently, where he was like walking around fucking campus. And also on top of that, like, bro, there is never, there is never a fucking, I guess the campus is really big, but there's never a moment. There's never a moment where local news won't use any fucking instance to just do copaganda. Like literally it's like they hit, they hit a couple buttons. Okay. First button they hit is thoughts and prayers. Uh, you know, nobody knows how we could have avoided this thoughts and prayers is all we got. And then the second button they hit is like, thank God for our police, our boys in the blue. It's like every single, almost every single one of these fucking mass shootings literally always ends when the shooter decides to end it or an unarmed person tries to apprehend the shooter. Okay? It's always, it's like never the cops that come in. I want the cops to come in and like actually fucking stop it. Okay? I want it. That'd be great. That's what that's what we pay him to do, you know? But it's wild. Like, the media plays this, you know, gigantic role in making it seem like... The media plays this gigantic role in making it seem like cops are always, like, fucking, you know, doing everything they can, and they do such a great job, and they always find the shooter. It's like, but they never do. They never do. And I don't understand it. Like, I don't know why the media... I mean, I do know why the media runs with that narrative. They have to. They have to. It's just like another arm of capital. I'm in place. This is regular part of police training. I know we talked to uh, Sheriff Michael Bouchard yesterday, uh, last night, and he was sending all his resources up there, thermal drones uh, to search for a suspect. But really, I think in this situation, what, what helped is just having an immense police presence on the ground. What do you mean? They found the shooter after he shot himself. Well, exactly. That's always how it works.
scouring, looking, and not to mention, and I have to give it to Michigan State University Police, and I, I've yet to see something like this. They were so quick to get a suspect picture out, keep the media informed, and it was all over social media. That image we saw, the shooter with the red shoes and the hat and the jean jacket, and it was ultimately someone who spotted the shooter, called police, and they moved in. But a terrifying four hours. Again, I don't need to tell you, but just a, a terrifying four hours here in and around uh, campus. That's not what happened. They made contact with the shooter and then he shot himself. Yeah. Hey, Jessica, I wanted to ask about uh, a search. That is, again, an incredibly fucking... That is, again, he's done with the shooting. He's, he's done the mass shooting. He's done with the shooting. He runs away, cops come up, and he kills himself. That's always what... That is the most common thing that happens. Is the most common thing that fucking happens in almost every single mass shooting. Is just like... The way that it goes is rarely ever... Cops come in, and they fucking apprehend the shooter. It's never like that. Like, even, even with uh, armed... Even with like armed retaliation from good guys with guns, it's still incredibly rare for a mass shooter to be apprehended or taken down before they're before they actually end up shooting and killing people. It just doesn't happen. And like obviously that's a very unlikely, a highly unlikely scenario anyway in the real world, because the real world's not like fucking the real world is not like fucking uh movies, right? I get that, which is why I advocate for more gun control, because like, I understand even after Uvalde, I said this where it was like, I get the fear that people have in not wanting to throw their bodies at the fucking problem, which is why you have to make it easier. You know what I mean? You have to make it easier for human beings to, to, uh, at least have like a, a better sense of control over a situation. But in a country where there are more guns in circulation than there are people, it's like impossible. So the, the, the gun control argument is literally a pro-cop argument when you think about it. Even though a lot of these fucking dickheads are, uh, you know, super, super pro-gun themselves. They just don't realize that like, yeah, it's, it's, a better, it's better for everyone if there, were, if there was more control over, over weapons and how they circulate. Yeah, sometimes they do come in and they shoot the good guy with the gun. That's why one of the main things in the concealed carry uh, training courses is to like, you know, they teach you the first thing. One of the first things they teach you is like immediately identify to the cops that you're a concealed carry holder. Search warrant. Uh, reportedly, there was a, a search performed on uh, a residence last night. Um, was that the shooter's residence? Do we know? Um, what do we know about that? Sources are telling me that that was the shooter's home. Uh, we did some some tracing back in the newsroom, and it does appear that he is a, obviously a Lansing resident. The facts do sort of trace up, although we have yet to hear that publicly from police. My sources are telling me that that is, in fact, his house. Um, there was one weapon recovered, uh, but he did have a backpack on him, according to sources, last night. So we've seen in other mass shootings uh, the possibility of more weapons or ammunition that he came to carry out that attack. Although that has not been confirmed publicly, we do know at least confirmed one weapon was recovered uh, from, from the shooter. Jessica, I wanted to ask you, um, while I'm listening to scanner traffic last night, and then of course you have students who are trying to be helpful and have heard a tip and they think that they've spotted someone. You've spoken about Gun control is a dangerous president, which opens road for government tyranny. It says Toddick's middle nut. So this is always the funniest fucking take from people because it's like, bro, we live under a tyrannical administration already. You're just stupid enough not to recognize it. What do you mean? What, what more tyranny is the government going to do? Are they going to come to your home and like forcibly uh, make you queer or something? Is that what you think is government tyranny? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You think the American government gives a shit about you? You think the American government is doing good things in general? No. You're just dumb and think that it's fine. Everything is all right because you can get your jalapeno poppers at Applebee's. Okay? 
Like, the government's tyrannical. I don't see you fucking fighting against it with your weapons. So shut the fuck up. And on top of that, like, there are probably less tyrannical and more free people, okay, around the world where they have less weapons in circulation. I would say that it's tyrannical to paywall healthcare. I would say that it's tyrannical to not allow people to survive in this country. It's tyrannical to fucking jail, uh, you know, uh, it, it's tyrannical to jail people who are addicted to drugs. It's tyrannical to have the highest prisoner population per capita. Okay? That's a police state. That's a prison state. That's the state that we live in. There are countries with far lower prisoner per capita numbers. Okay? There are countries where the government at least, like, takes care of their uh, health problems. Those are infinitely less tyrannical nations, just objectively so. And yet, they don't have guns. It's crazy to me that we think like, oh man, America could become a tyrannical government. It's like, bro, what do you mean? I mean, what do you think? I think it's fucking personally tyrannical that we got kids who have survived two mass shootings in a row. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty tyrannical that the government doesn't do shit about that. That's wild. It's insane. That's crazy. The brilliant work that police have done out there and just how many officers, how wide of a scale this was. But I'm I'm wondering what do those tips mean? How do they process those, determine whether or not it's something they should move on and maybe they're, you know, close to finding someone and then they get a tip and they go somewhere else. They're having to filter all of this in real time. I say this as someone who also loves shooting guns. Like, I, you know I don't have a problem with guns. I don't have an issue with guns. I like shooting guns. They're fun, okay? But they're very dangerous. I recognize how fucking dangerous guns are, okay? I mean, it's not like I hide that, by the way. You know, I've done it on stream. Absolutely. And that's a that's a really good point. And we heard the deputy chief of Michigan State University Police touch on that, you know, talking about you can't believe everything you see on social media. And we know that these kids, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, they're all over social media. And we know how fast that spreads. So not only are police looking for the shooter, they're also having to sift through all of the rumors and all yeah. of that. And then, you know, you can't you can't not check it because that could be the tip that right. leads to the shooter. So it's a, a, an incredible job by law enforcement last night. And especially, as I've said before in the reporting, the context of the situation, it's just such a massive undertaking. In, in the past, we've seen shootings contained to a store or one specific building in a school. This scope was incredible. Just wow. thank you again for all your reporting out there. And we know as a... Uh, uh God damn, bro. It's just like over and over again. The scanner audio as they approached him. Ooh, what does Intel do? Gary say? wrote you. We got a person on the line saying they saw the subject matching the shooter's description on High Street near McDonald's near Lake Lansing. Okay, clear on that. Oh, 1136, just be advised. Eight Boston ones also heading in that area. 